and the church and all the ones that it's also Ted for the painting that he done in the back. Amen. I haven't forgot that. Amen. And the rest of you guys, you know all the stuff you put in. But if you haven't put anything in, what can we do? If somebody has a big blower and you want to do something, blow the church off, that would be fine. But if we wanted to do something special, I'm going to tell you something that would be cool. Take black the case motor oil that the gypsies use to do the driveways and put it on the church driveway, case motor oil, and put it down just to prove that it's going to last. Amen. So whoever wants to do that, amen, we could do it on a Saturday, and we could bring our outfits out, everybody load up 50 gallons, and let's just shoot the darn thing down just to do it. It would clean it up. And if I could get some volunteers on that, I'll, don't even worry about that. The special stuff that I have that I can put into it. It's a hardener. It's a little more money, sir, but it's the hardener and it works beautiful. Hey, I'll help spray. Henry will help spray. So let's get this together. And we're going to do it. Come in and strike. Nobody's laughing about it. It's getting done professional. And people are going to look at it and they're going to say, look at what they've done with the church. Okay. Trust in you. Thank you, Jesus. My God, we worship you tonight, my God. Father God, we thank you that we can trust in you, my God. We 
thank you, Jesus, Father God, for your goodness, my God, for your grace, Father God, for your mercy, my Lord God.
Well, this month, I turned 61 years old, amen? And when I see Mary that I had the privilege as a child to minister to, to be ministering to us, it makes me feel good. Your visions should never be stopped. You should always go on. Sometimes we wonder, are we, is anybody getting anything out of this? So I have to do this one story, and I've used it many times, but I have to share it with somebody that doesn't know. In 19, no, what would be 1992, I guess that's when I first started pastoring, and we would go down to the homeless. And uh, one day I'm in my dump truck and I'm shifting gears and I'm driving my own dump truck back then when I was a hoss, you know, I could do everything, maybe one hard man if I had him. But Ted knows that, that's what I did. And uh, so I'm driving down the road and I'm shifting these gears and I'm praying. I'm like having this conversation with the Lord and I said, God, is anybody getting anything out of this, what I'm doing? I mean, maybe I should invest more time into, you know, work or something, you know? Is anybody getting anything? So I looked at my gas gauge, and it was empty, so I needed to pull off. So I pulled off a quarter field road and at the Exxon there, and I pulled in and I started fueling the dump truck up. Back then, you could fill your whole dump truck up for a dollar ten. I'm just kidding, Mary. You really thought that, see? But twenty gallons or fifty gallons of gas is probably a dollar something a gallon, so it wasn't that much. But it took time to fill fifty gallons up, and I hear this shout, Pastor Ernie, and I said, "What?" Me, it's me, Leroy Brown. It's not the guy from the song, Leroy Brown, the baddest guy. It was Leroy Brown from the homeless. Leroy Brown was a derelict. If you don't know what a derelict is, maybe I'm using too big of words. And I didn't learn all these words in, amongst travelers or amongst school people. I think Joan taught me most of the big words. But a derelict, if you don't know what it is, is somebody that is in bad, intoxicated state, goes like this, you know, that's, he's out of it. And I've only seen him as a derelict. So he runs over to the dump truck. And he said, Pastor Ernie, he said, when you came down and you prayed over me and nobody else would touch me, man, man, things happen. I said, he said, let me tell you what happened. He said, I got my own business now. See that pressure cleaning business? And you didn't know it from before. I was a Navy, I was a Navy like warrant officer, like so high up. And you didn't know it before, but I had AIDS, and I thought life was over. And you didn't know it before, but you, in, you invited me to, to accept God as my Savior and my, and my Lord, and I went to a Baptist church. I met a woman there, and I got married. 
and I have a house. And I would like for you to come out and do my driveway. That's the God's honest truth. The guy that I ministered to the homeless, and I'm going down the road saying, did anybody get anything out of this? God's word doesn't go void. And I still think of it today. When I finished his driveway, and the man had money to pay me for the driveway. You don't think something you have done means something, but you could change a man, a woman's, a child's life like you've never dreamed possible. I'll never forget, there was a traveler boy came up to me and said, I never knew the Lord if it wasn't for you ministering. So don't give up. Don't think you're just going through this the stages where nobody's getting anything out of it. If you get something out of it, if you can get one person out of the pits of hell, you've done something. You accomplished something. And every one of you are dreadfully needed in this thing called life. So the day we do stay in the judgment, and maybe we don't have much treasure, maybe we hardly had any, but maybe one guy will come up to you when a child and said, do you remember that day? And you probably won't even remember it, but they did because it changed their whole life. Amen? Somebody give the Lord a hand. Amen. That's why I'm in this thing. And I had this year one of the best ever. I'm in Disney World. I told them, I said, I can't go any farther. And they said, go over and step by the hot dog place, my, my daughter told me. So the first guy was there. I said, can I sit here? And they said, yeah, you can sit there. I didn't have my wallet, so don't look around. Yes, I would have bought a hot dog if I had some money, but I didn't have, and I was running out of water. And the only reason I got back up with them because I had to use tap water from the bathroom. And I said, I'll get sick and die at Disney World. So that's it. So I'm sitting there, and somehow something comes up that recently happened. I don't want to go there because I don't want to change, or I don't want to. But the woman had the same situation that happened. I started witnessing to her, and as she started to leave, she, I said to her, well, when the time comes, of, I'll have a seat saved for you in heaven. And she said, it wasn't by chance I sat by you. Maybe I'll have one for you. But she said, you know something? You build my confidence in the Lord. And we prayed for her granddaughter. This woman lost two sons, a husband, and had a daughter, granddaughter that didn't know if the Lord even exists. And as I sat and I finished it up, I came back to the group and I said, you know something? I got to witness today. A million people at the park and this woman asked me if she could sit down by me out of all these seats. And the thing about Jesus came up. And who do you think brought it up? Me. Not afraid to or ashamed of the gospel. Man, there's so much you can do. And the woman finished, she said, you know, the enemy's building his army, and I said, God is building his too, and you're in God's army. Let's get Joseph up to give this message, amen. Somebody give the Lord a hand, amen. Taller, heads smaller. I like that. My brother Richard smaller. My nephew Richard smaller. Life's good right now. You have your Bibles or your 
phones or we'll look at the screen, you can go to Isaiah 40, 31. And it says, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Dear Heavenly Father, bless the word tonight, Jesus. Let it come out the way that you want it to come out, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. To me, there's nothing like when you cry out or when you say the name Jesus. To me, it means a whole lot. Because when, when I'm in my truck, or if I need a prayer answered, or I'm seeking something, I feel like that I can go to him and he's there for me. I feel, I feel relaxed, I feel calm, I feel like I'm at peace, I do. And that's how all of us should really feel when we're feeling down about ourselves, when, when we don't know which way to go or which way that, that how God wants us to go, we can cry out to the name of Jesus and he's there to pick us up, give us some extra strength, give us a little bit of encouragement and, that, and actually show us what we need to do for our day by day or actually what, what's our next step that we need to take. And that, and not a lot of people realize that, that you can talk to Jesus. You can go to him and tell him what's on your mind in that. He's like your, he's like your doctor, your guidance counselor. He's everything. He's, like your, he's your father in heaven. He's like a brother. He's everything to you, and you can go to him. You can go to him, and he won't judge you. He'll tell you how to fix a couple, fix a couple things in your life, but it's up to you to actually go out and do it, but he will give you the strength and the courage to go, uh, to go do it. He'll tell you right from wrong. You have to, you have to go listen, listen to him and actually hear what he's telling you to do. Go to uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 7. For we walk in faith and not by sight. Sometimes when I'm going out, when I'm out going, going to work or I'm driving and that, and I've shared my testimony to people and they said, wow, or, or they'll tell me, wow, man, you're not that lucky and that your leg's still messed up. Or they'll say, man, look what all you've been put through. How do you know that he was there, actually there, there with you and that? Look what all what happened to you. Is there really a God after what happened to you? That's, that's what everyone would say. If something happens, is there really a God? And though actually, if you look right now, even on the Netflix, or you look at today's society, that they made Jesus weak. They got him like he's weak, but they got everybody else like they're more, more stronger, more powerful, more knowing. They got the demons that can take out the Christians. They got... They got Jesus being gay on Netflix and that, but there ain't no, they got him like he's a joke, they do. But my God, he gets me, he, he's all powerful. There ain't no one like him, there isn't. He's, I've seen him heal me multiples of times from dying. I could have died twice. I see my dad, I see my dad get healed with his heart attack. I've actually seen my Aunt Macy get healed twice. Recently, I did. She lost loads of blood. I had a quarter, uh, I, had, um, I don't know how much she had, I think like a quart of blood left over in her. And she made it to the hospital, and she's 100% better. I've seen my, my family my, uh, uh, be blessed. I've seen everyone in this church uh, be blessed. So how can you actually sit there and say, there's not a God when he's actually blessed us uh, every single day of our lives. How can you? No one knows, not, not a lot of people know, but you have ev every single day when you come up, when you get up, I know I said this before, but you're really, you're really over, really blessed when you can actually go out 
and that's a blessing, and that's actually a miracle. They can go out every day. When we was walking the parks of uh, Disney, seeing little girls, they're not they're not a hundred percent healthy. A lot of them are. A lot of them are sick. But you got to thank God where, where He put you at. Thank God that where God actually put you at the time right now, and that. If you go to uh, James one six. But let him ask in faith with no doubt, and for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. When Jesus came off, when he came, when he walked, the day he walked on water, all his disciples was on a boat. And he said, and he's walking on water right here. Walking right on water, me, uh, me, my brother Richard, and a couple people in this church seeing it, and he, and they were so they were they were blown away. They thought he was a ghost. They were scared to death. But he told them. He said, "Take courage, don't be afraid." And then Peter, one of his disciples, said to him, "Is it really you?" Lord, is it really you? And he said, if it is you, tell me to come out onto the water. And then Jesus said, come on out. Peter had a little bit of faith. And his little bit of faith took him and he started walking on the water. And when he started walking on the water, it was going good. He was walking, but then what happened to Peter? Like all of us, a couple waves came in our lives, shook us up, and he started to sink. He did. He started to sink, and he screamed and said, Help me, Lord. And then right when he was going down, Jesus grabbed him, and he said to him when he grabbed him, You only had a little bit of faith. That's just with a little bit of faith. Think what, what we could all do if we had 100% of our faith into Jesus. It's I really blew. When I read that, and uh, I've been going back and forth with this message, and he only had a little bit of faith. Think what we could do when we put that, let go of the world, all the distraction, all the noises around the world and that. All the stuff that we're going through in our lives, our, our day by day, if we just tone that down, turn that down in our lives and that, and actually give our faith to Jesus and not worry about what's going to happen tomorrow, what's going to happen uh, the next day, next year, or what happened yesterday and that, our faith would be so strong and all that, there would be no doubt in our life. And I know sometimes every day that we're... We get a little, uh, little bit uh, shooken up. We're like, I don't know if this, if this is going to work and all that. With Jesus Christ in your life, you can do anything. You can conquer any mountain. You can go out and do anything if you have that little bit of faith in your life. And I, I've written more in that, but I breeze through it in that. But I'm going to, you know, your life will never be the same if you have Jesus in your life in that. So have the faith put keep 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 uh, on your word with uh your word and that and never give up and that's my message and that was short but yeah i was there on the sea of galilee and the winds when it came up to go down on that boat and for God to say, ye with a little faith, but you're walking on water with a little faith, huh? Keeping your eye, imagine that, you're walking on water. In other words, the elements what normally is supposed to take you down isn't going to take you down. And that's what we got to do. We can't doubt. We have to have faith. We've got to believe. Without faith, what? It's in what? 
come on, and what is it? Impossible to what? Please who? Come on, Mary. God. Without faith, it is what? In what? Possible. What does that mean? If you don't have faith, it's impossible to please him. But he who believes all things are what? Possible. What? All things are possible. Without faith, it's impossible. Nobody can. It's, that's something that a non Christian can never comprehend. With faith, your possibilities are endless. Without faith, you have nothing. You have nothing. Good job, Joe. Amen. Let's close up. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Thank you for the word. Thank you for the time he's put in. And Lord, we just ask you right now to keep blessing us so we can keep going forward in Jesus' name. Amen.